I ripped it off. Welcome back DOG fam. Welcome to all the new viewers and thank you for coming by to my channel. Today we're going to review the Logitech G923 steering wheel, the drive force shifter and the clutch brake and gas pedal set. Ta-da! There it is guys. The steering wheel with the shifter and actually the pedals are on the bottom. This uh, steering wheel and the shifter with the pedal set came in a bundle. Usually it's just the steering wheel and the pedal set. The shifter is separate, but I got this through Best Buy and it also came with GT7. I got a good deal on it a couple of uh, weeks ago and I couldn't pass it up. I had to get it because I wanted to experience the sim racing scene. And let me tell you guys, using a steering wheel opposed to using a controller, it makes a huge difference. Why? Because you got the whole car under your control. I mean, don't get me wrong, you're still gonna have spin outs, but the best part is you get to feel as if you're driving your dream car, which for me, that's a huge thing because obviously there's Lamborghinis, there's Ferraris, there's Bugattis. I'm not too sure if there's a Bugatti and GT7. Please let me know down in the comments below. But if that's the case, then damn, I would love to drive a Bugatti. Look at this beauty, guys. Look at that. It's not connected right now, so it's gonna might spin out of control. But don't mind all the heck, cables coming out of the bottom of this thing. That's the only bad part. You gotta do a lot of cable management with this. But check that out, guys. Look at how beautiful that is. I will show you guys a close-up of the product so you guys can check out the back paddles and the way that you screw this on and how you set it up on your desk. Yes, this steering wheel is compatible with your sim racer seat. I don't have a sim racer seat, as you guys can see, and I don't think I could fit a sim racer seat. So I have to settle for uh, jamming it against my desk and be careful that I won't pull it off my desk with the hard shifting. So the steering wheel spokes are composed of anodized aluminum, which make it a very rigid steering wheel to be able to use. It's not like before where it was made out of plastic. I used to own one of those plastic steering wheels. Funny part is it was a Logitech, but sim racing has come such a long way and that's a perfect example of it. The wheel is covered with this amazing leather stitching and it also has a center point, which is an anodized aluminum colored in blue to let you know what the center point of the steering wheel is. The shaft of the steering wheel is made out of steel, which makes it an even more rigid steering wheel to be able to use and you know you got just hard turns and then you got your little drifting action going on you know you need the e-brake and all that stuff but we don't have that so that's okay we can actually use the brake on our foot to be able to do that or just press a button on the steering wheel the shifter paddles are made out of brushed stainless steel and it actually gives a very nice feel as you guys can hear it has the clicky sound to let you know that, that you're shifting gears. The pedal frame and arms are made out of cold roll steel, which should take a pretty good amount of beating. So if you got a heavy foot like I do, that sucker will last you for a while. I mean, they're nowhere near the way they used to be. Maybe, what, 10, 15 years ago, if you jammed on that gas pedal and slammed on the brake, you probably break the damn thing and you'll be uh, screwed out of your uh, steering wheel and uh, pedal combo. The specifications for the steering wheel, it has a 900 degree wheel lock. So that means that it will go all the way around both directions, just like on a real car, as well as dual motors force feedback with true force, which gives you that amazing feel of the road. And when you go over the little lumps when you're racing, Yes, you will feel that. You feel like your car is going to fishtail? Yes, you'll feel that. The steering wheel itself will send all the feedback into your hands where you would literally feel as if you're driving a real car. This is the closest you will ever get to actually breaking the law without getting a ticket or into big problems. Don't do it out in the street, guys. Another amazing thing, overheating. We all know that overheating is gonna be an issue. This has an overheating safeguard. So no matter how many hours you play, the device itself has a safeguard that allows it for it not to overheat. As for the pedals, a non-linear brake pedal is used on this system as well as a patented carpet grip. So what does that mean? That means if you play on the carpet where a lot of people more than likely have carpet in their in their room or wherever they're gonna play, it will not slip. Like before, you would only get like these little pegs of plastic on the end and you're over here fighting against the carpet because the damn pedals are slipping from under your feet. That was, oh man, I remember those days. It was horrible. You had to find a stop like a wall so you could shove it against the wall and it won't move anywhere. It has a textured heel grip where you could play barefoot you know I mean I, I wouldn't play barefoot but if you got those awesome racing shoes you could put them on too but your feet will not slip if you're barefoot or if you got them racing shoes or your tennis shoes 
that means that you'll be able to keep your feet aligned with the pedals that you're using and another thing guys the steering wheel when you power it on don't touch it it's going to rotate left and rotate right it's doing a self calibration that way it's right dead center and ready for you to race what system is this steering wheel compatible with you know what that's one thing i want to talk to you guys about i feel that logitech i know it's a business and they want to be able to monetize off of every product so they ended up creating two versions of the steering wheel i feel that it's just because of the buttons you know how the playstation has the ps button in the middle and uh playstation has the triangle square x and circle and xbox has a b y and x well you guys know the whole ordeal and the fact that they did this it kind of sucks because if you're like me and you own an xbox and a ps5 you want to be able to use this on both systems as for the shifter i think the shifter you can actually use it on both systems, which as you guys can see here, there's nothing on it that lets you know that it's actually only for one particular system. And get this guys, good part is, oh, by the way, I actually play on PC too. This is compatible with PC. So chop chop, Logitech, come on guys, you guys gotta create a steering wheel that is playable on the Xbox, on the PS5, and the PC. You're gonna make a lot of consumers like myself very happy because we don't wanna budge 400 bucks for another steering wheel let's not even go into fanatec or the cls or whatever the heck the other company is i just started getting into sim racing so don't judge me guys and uh, let me know down in the comments below which one of the other two is more expensive i know this one is for budget racers like myself the other two is like yeah a little too rich for my blood so what comes in the box with this this actually came with the steering wheel the pedals and the shifter remember guys this was a bundle when I got it. The way it comes is just the steering wheel and the pedals. The shifter itself is completely separate. But let's jump into a game and let's check it out. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the system to the desk and try our best to get it to sit nice and snug where I won't rip it off the desk. All right guys, so here are the pedals. As you guys can see, they are made out of aluminum here is that non-slip pad for your heels, and I'll go ahead and show you the backside of it. Don't mind the cables on the bottom of my desk. That is powering all the stuff I have on there. But there you go, guys. Look at that. All right, guys. So here is the non-slip part of the rug. Be careful and don't prick your fingers because those are actually spikes. The way you access it is you grab this part, pull it up, and there you go. This part reveals itself. Now, the entire setup will not slip away from you if you play on a rug, but if you're playing on a wooden floor like I am, make sure that's tucked away nice and neat. Here are the mounting holes for your racing simulator seat. You go ahead and you put that in there and that puppy will not go anywhere. All right guys, so here are the pedals themselves. As you guys can see, very nicely machined and they look like they're great quality. I mean, they look very sturdy. They should be able to withstand some stomping and let's put it to the test. So as for the steering wheel, you get your directional pad. This does not work. This is not a horn, it's just a sticker. You get your L2, L3, plus, minus. You get your share button, your options, your PS button, a little jog wheel. That way you can select items through the menu or the game itself, return, which means it will select it, kind of work like your X button. There you go, you got your regular PlayStation buttons, R2, R3. And as you guys can see back here, here's the actual shifter paddles with the nice clicky sound. Both of them work the same way. And then right here, this is what actually tightens up the actual uh, J hook down here to your desk. So you turn it and you figure out a good mounting point. And once you have it, you push down to lock this in place. I have issues with this staying in place. So I try my best to be careful and not actually uh, yank on the steering wheel too much because I might rip it off the desk. This is where you connect the shifter This is from the steering wheel. You got this little cable management thing here You got your power and your gas brake and clutch pedal right there Then you get your cables out right here. It's up to you to do the cable management All right guys So what you do here is you get your steering wheel and you go ahead you stick it on the edge of the desk and once you have it in there, you're gonna go ahead and turn this particular wheel until you feel that it's actually tight. Now you go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. The same thing applies to the actual shifter. You turn these wheels until it's nice and tight and then you press down on it to lock it in place. That way you know you're ready to go. All right guys, so the steering wheel is in place. 
Well, I almost dropped everything from my desk. Now that's nice and sturdy. You got your shifter in place and you also have the pedals. So the pedals are ready to go. So now the only thing you have to remember is don't touch the steering wheel when you power it on because it is gonna jog left and right and you don't wanna get hurt by that or you might damage the steering wheel. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and plug in the steering wheel to the PlayStation and check this out. This is what I'm talking about where it self calibrates. Watch this. You don't wanna touch the steering wheel when it's doing that because it's self calibrating itself now you're ready to go all right as you guys can see it actually has this light system here that tells you when you need to shift watch this there it is it's kind of like on the f1 racers where you get that little lighting system listen to the way it, it sounds when you go off the road it actually vibrates when you hit the wall when you go off the road when you go over the little bumps the shifter itself actually is made out of leather, as you guys can see here. It has this nice little plate on the top, which is more than likely made out of plastic. And the base has a leather boot also to mimic an actual shifter inside a car. And don't mind this part here, it actually fell apart when I was tightening it up. But other than that, it does have a solid feel when you're shifting. Uh, besides the fact that you might rip it off the desk. So it's more reliable when it's mounted to an, an actual racing seat because it's not gonna be yanked off the actual desk. All right guys, so now we got the whole system set up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go into a little race mode. I'll give you guys a little example of how all these items work well together. We're gonna use the shifter. We're also gonna use the paddles and I'll show you guys the gas brake and clutch at the bottom. We're gonna go into settings to change it to stick gonna go here manual and there we go all right so here we go guys ah! I don't know what gear I was in oh there we go off fourth there we go oh whoa 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 whoa, whoa. <laughs> all right ripped it off all right guys so we are in manual transmission whoa I hope the camera caught that. All right, so that is a negative on this particular shifter. Um, I was going to say nice things about it, but um, yeah, the spring, I don't know where it landed, but so yeah, I kind of over tightened it and I made the spring come out, but let's just put this back in there. All right, guys, so here we go. We're in, uh, we should be in third, uh, second gear. Okay, there we go. This is my first time I try it out with the actual uh, shifter and the steering wheel. Well, without it being an automatic. And uh, there's not a lot of space in between. Oh, see, I don't even have my foot on the wrong. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So we're gonna stop real quick and I'm gonna let you guys know. This is the first time I try it with the shifter. And let me, let's stop this damn car. This is the first time I tried it with the shifter, and let me tell you, this is no joke. You have to practice in order for you to get good at this particular combo. Yes, you can use the actual pedal paddles here, so I'll show you guys. So that second, which might be a lot more easier to use. All right, you can hear it right there. So with the paddles, you don't have to use the actual clutch. You can just shift with the paddles, and it'll engage as you guys can see there yeah don't bash on me i know i suck at this this is like i said before the first time i get into this uh sim racing ordeal here and uh yeah i'm in last place i do pretty good on the automatic i don't do that well with the stick shift Woo! all right Woo! you see what i mean guys the stream will automatically adjust it so I can't even talk right now. I'm trying to talk and record at the same time. Ah! All right, talk, play, and record. This is not gonna work. Okay, well, good thing this car is not real because I would have busted the motor already. 
but I hope you guys are enjoying me screwing up here. But this is a load of fun, and uh, it's my first time trying it in uh, autom uh, manual, manual mode. This is the first time I try it, so you guys are experiencing all my screw ups. Hit the wall, woo! All right, ah! Look at all my monitors shaking all over the place. Come on, baby, let's go. I know I'm in last place. Let's see if we can make a trick. Woo! No, no, bad idea, bad idea. Oh, ah all right, guys, there it is. I just made a fool of myself driving this thing. This is the first time I experienced driving with the shifter or even using the paddles. I've been using automatic mode because it's the first time I jump into this racing simulator type of deal. All right, guys, so all in all, the actual steering wheel has about two newton meters of driving force. That's how much resistance you're gonna get within the game as you're driving. And you know, you get all that uh, force feedback. But let me know what do you guys think about the particular product. I think it probably goes for about four out of five stars. I'm knocking one full star off because the actual knob fell off. So this is a great sim racing entry steering wheel compared to the Fanatec, which runs for about $1,700. Like, man, ah, uh, yeah, that is way too much for me. I am not gonna spend no $1,700 on no steering wheel to sit in front of the desk. No offense to anybody that's into the sim racing. That is an awesome steering wheel. But for me, at this particular moment in time, it's just out of my budget. How many of you guys actually have this steering wheel? Let me know down in the comments below. How do you feel about it? Do you like it? Do you think that it's four out of five stars just like I do? The pedals themselves feel pretty sturdy. And you know, they do take a really good beating considering that I actually have a heavy foot. Now, as far as the shift knob goes and the way it's mounted on the desk, I feel that that would get a possibly two and a half out of five stars because I did rip off the steering wheel from the desk prior to me actually starting the game. And that shouldn't be happening. If you're clamping it down well on the desk, it should not rip off. But the steering wheel, it actually held up pretty well. I think that this combo would do great on one of those sim racer seats because you could actually bolt them on and they're not clamped on with anything. I'm not sure if it's because I have a mouse pad on there, but whatever the case is, I'm enjoying it and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Guys, this is no joke. It is difficult. I give so much credit to all the sim racers. It's very difficult to play because I've never tried a sim racer and like I said before, it's my first time. So I gotta just practice. Practice, you just get better. It doesn't make perfection, but you just get better. But let me know down in the comments below if you do own one of these steering wheels. And if you wanna race, let me know. But I just gotta stick it into automatic because, uh, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not good with this. But I saw, as you guys may have seen, um, this happened. So the knob to put the actual shifter on the desk fell apart. It broke. I don't know. I think I over tightened it. It might have been my fault, but I'm not too sure. I'll fix this later on. But if you're a dad, a gaming dad, and you enjoy sim racers, uh, I enjoy it too, but I kind of suck at it. I just got to practice. Don't forget to check out my latest video. But till next time, guys, I'm Tech. Peace out. And here comes the helicopter doing their normal flyby when I'm trying to film once again. Thank you guys, thank you.